Scotty, it's WCCS 101.1 FM, AM 1160, WCCSradio.com. It's always interesting when the county commissioners gather and I say to them something silly like, hey, what should we talk about? <laughs> it's not as if there's nothing to talk about. Everybody wants to hear about broadband. Byron covered that actually with the uh, Chamber of Commerce uh, and, uh, and, and did a nice job with that presentation. Our conversation with our Indiana County Commissioners today brought to you by Marcus and Mack, voted Best Personal Injury Law Firm in the Best of Indiana County Contest. Marcus and Mack, a law firm representing injured people. Our Commissioners, Robin Gorman, Shireen Hess, Mike Keith, all with us in the studio this morning. Morning, everybody. Good morning. morning. It's good to have you all with us. Shereen, we haven't started with you for a while, so let's let's start with you today uh, and and talk about uh, economic development, uh, which is uh, always an interesting topic, isn't mm-hmm. it? I can say a little bit about that, and I like to see it through the lens of outdoor recreation and um, environmental cleanup projects, water cleanup and things like that, and mm-hmm. the conservation district just announced that they, were, uh, getting, they, they are getting a $3.7 million loan on behalf of Homer City's um, tide, tide pile cleanup, and there's a huge project going on there with that um, to clean up the bony pile, and, and uh, which will then clean up the wa- make the water quality that much better. And speaking of that, our Ghost Town Trail um, plant, the uh, treatment plant, is going online uh, this month, um, actually, and that will clean up many miles of uh, Blacklick Creek Mm -hmm. along the Ghost Town Trail. And we always love to see those things in our rural parts because it, you know, it's a, it's an attractant to, to bicyclers and hikers and walkers and skiers. Even I've skied on the Ghost Town Trail. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of great things coming and I'm sure um, there are other economic development projects that um, my colleagues can talk about, but those are the ones I I like to talk about. Yeah. Well, Mm -hmm. Excellent start to the morning today. Economic development, always very, very important. Uh, and our other commissioners in the studio with us today. And either of you can weigh in on that topic as well, if you'd like. Uh, <laughs> well, when I think of economic development, I think of buildings and infrastructure and growth, which is always exciting. But you have to have workforce to go with that, right? And mm-hmm. so that's my background. That's my bailiwick. And we continuously work with all of our partners, businesses. Um, we attended last Friday the career fair that the, our career link had, and both they teamed with Armstrong County, so Armstrong in Indiana, and they held it at Elderton High School. And it was very well represented, and uh, they brought a lot of the high school students in in the morning. Yeah. Very well done. Um, and uh, it means so much to have those businesses really put some of those young people on the spot and interview them, and it breaks down barriers, gets them used to, hey, talk to me about what you want to do with your life, and then in the afternoon, it was open to the public, and uh, it was really well attended. I was very pleased, but um, our businesses struggle, continue to struggle, and will, uh, simply because of the population demand and, and the talent that's needed. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and it's interesting that soft skills challenge is going on right now this week with high school students, and you see bands of them uh, roving up and down our streets. Uh, uh, Commissioner Mike Keith, um, uh, Robin mentioned infrastructure, and it's 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 a very important aspect of economic development. Um, and we might not think of it this way, but, uh, you know, the smallest little problem uh, can impact funding to fix that problem uh, in, in a big way. You were talking about a couple of municipal bridges uh, that because of uh, different factors, um, uh, funding to get those bridges repaired or maybe even in the future replaced uh, is in jeopardy simply because of, of, of tiny little details. Yeah, actually, Todd, uh, the last past uh, storm events we just had, uh, actually there was uh, some bridges that were basically knocked out of and they're being uh, put out of service right now. But um, we, when we look at a bridge, we don't think about what size or what it actually is. But uh, when a bridge actually is under 20 feet, uh, then at that point, uh, PennDOT funding and other funding is not available. Uh, then that actually lies totally on the backs of the, uh, the municipality. Mm-hmm. And again, municipalities, you know, out of a tax dollar, they actually get a nickel out of a dollar. Um, so they they struggle because, you know, what they depend on as far as their revenue, 
uh, they just don't receive as much. And then after that, with the daily, you know, road construction that they have to do during the summer, plowing the snow during the winter, doesn't leave a lot left to actually do new projects. So unfortunately, a lot of those bridges either get shut down uh, temporary until they find the money, or they permanently get shut down, yeah. and which makes an inconvenience not only the residents, but then after that, you put a strain on emergency services getting that uh, to the needed person whenever they they do need it in distress. Yeah, it's the old uh, "for want of a nail, the shoe was lost" type of thing, and and uh, that's you know it, it's interesting because we don't realize it when a bridge goes down, a truck can't go across that bridge, uh, an ambulance. We hear sirens right now. A fire truck can't go across that bridge. Uh, and and all of a sudden, you're rerouting things, you're delaying things, and, and it becomes a really big problem for uh, one small detail. Uh, and it's, it's really interesting to me that uh, that it works that way. We understand why there are restrictions in place and, wh- and why things have to be the way that they are, but the, the workarounds aren't always the simplest thing in the world we've got an election coming up too uh the primary election is uh ready to roll here next week is it next week next yeah tuesday. it is it's next tuesday my goodness my goodness are we ready to go we are i say we're ready yeah <laughs> yeah i mean the mail ballots have gone out and we all have seen the uh all the equipment being lined up and ready to be deployed so to speak and mm-hmm. we have a terrific elections team who's just make it go like that. So we hope yeah. everyone will get out and vote. I heard there's about 48,000 registered voters. I'm sure not all of those folks will vote um, in the primary, but we certainly encourage them to. Uh, this is presidential, congressional, state, uh, um, your you know, delegates to the convention. So mm-hmm. it might not seem very important in the primary, but it is. So. Sure. You're picking candidates. Yeah, civic, civic duty, right on. <laughs> yeah, you're picking you're picking your candidates, and it's your chance to uh, to make your voice heard. And sure. it's really important that uh, folks realize that. I, I wish, as I said before, um, and, and this is just the way I look at it. Uh, others look at it differently. I wish people would educate themselves before they go to the ballot box. Uh, and if they don't educate themselves, I wish they'd stay home. <laughs> there are voters' guides online for people, and if they just do a search for. I know League of Women Voters puts out a nice one, and even the a lot of the media stations put out voters' guides. And, of course, the we, the candidates have their own websites, but yeah. the nonpartisan voter guides are out there. So, yeah, yeah and it's – sometimes you think everybody's the same, and they're not. So yeah. it's, it's good to look at their profiles and, as you say, get informed. Byron Stauffer gave a uh, presentation to the Chamber of Commerce about a number of different topics um, either yesterday or whatever day that was that when, when the Chamber Board met. Um, one of the things he was talking about is uh, getting broadband uh, rolling again and the agreements that the county has in order to make that happen. Uh, there have been supply chain issues in order to get uh, uh, satellite, or not satellite, uh, but Internet rolling and broadband uh, and, and in Indiana County, we've felt that. Other counties have felt it as well. Are we starting to get that bottleneck finally cleared up and get through that and, and make agreements and get things rolling? Well, as far as the, the agreements, uh, I mean, they're already signed. We already passed them at the commissioner's meeting. We have uh, Saul's Giver uh, received uh, one for the north and also uh, REA are in the sticks. Um, they have also received a, a large grant. But... Um, as far as the materials and everything, I, uh, it is coming in, coming in slow. But uh, reason being is, is because of the broadband across the nation and the, and the funding that's there. So, uh, you know, everybody's trying to grab all that material at once, you know, to get their projects done. But, uh, uh, with, you know, talking with uh, the people who have the contracts, uh, it's, it's moving forward for Indiana County. Yeah. Yeah, Todd, it's so interesting how you, um, you're so good at what you do, but you break it down because nothing is really easy ever, (laughs) right? And nowadays, but you're right. The contracts are in place. The funding's in place. We, as everyone knows that we awarded our last award to REA, REA's internet service provider is called In the Sticks. They have uh, the electricity, um, you know, realm, if you will. So infrastructure poles, that kind of thing. Uh, But I was just talking with our colleagues across the state, um, other county commissioners and counties, and the one guy, he's so frustrated because of this supply chain backup, Mm -hmm. whether it's glass or the fiber uh, for the outlay. 
And he said, I just went with Starlink, and that's going to be the future anyway, and we're probably wasting a lot of money, and we're all going, no, <laughs> don't say that. Uh, but, you know, it gets very frustrating because, we're obviously, our residents, and through COVID, after COVID, they want this. They need this, right? And mm-hmm. we've heard that, and, and we are doing everything we can to keep pushing it out. But it seems like, you know, three steps forward, five steps back. Sure, sure. <laughs> but – we do not intend to let the foot off the gas on that one. Getting things done at any level, county level included, is is awfully difficult. There are a lot of things that have to happen and have to happen right and in the right order in, uh, so that things can get done. And, and it's not an easy thing. All right. Anything else we need to tell folks uh, today? The sun's shining. <laughs> and I keep looking out to make sure it keeps uh, shining and get that rain out of here. We've had enough rain for a while, but... Yeah, and I was just actually looking across to the courthouse where the veterans' wall is. Uh, mm-hmm. They're starting to construct the new wall that's uh, going to be uh, put in place uh, Memorial Day. Yeah, I saw them working on it yesterday. Yep. Yeah, so the, I believe uh, I spoke to Ellen Lockard last, and uh, around 190 brick will be placed in that new yeah. wall. Yeah, yeah. And was, there's still room for more. <laughs> I was watching them, and I was thinking, hey, you got a sunny day for once. you got to get things done. <laughs> Thank you. Well, folks, thanks so much for coming over for a visit this morning. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, Todd. Our Indiana County Commissioners, it is the voice of Indiana County, WCCS 101.1 FM, AM 1160 and WCCS Radio.